Yes, and that just shows <laughs> you took the job as president and CEO of the Minneapolis Foundation um, when you were also being offered, as I understand it, the lead job in Los Angeles County as administrator. Um, why did you choose the Minneapolis Foundation? You know, it's so, I mean, this is such an interesting story. It's interesting to me because I thought I was at a point in my career uh, where I was going to be at the county until I retired. Mm -hmm. And so I you was- kind of mastered it, that. That's, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. And it, the, the one thing about um, being the county administrator at Hennepin was that there was, you were always learning something new. So it was never a boring kind of job, <laughs> ever. I'm sure not. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, um, I had a call from a headhunter that I ignored for a little bit. And uh, uh, my assistant uh, at that time, Yolanda, um, really brought it, kept bringing it to my attention because she thought she'd like to go to Los Angeles. <laughs> so this is a funny story. Vested interest. <laughs> so anyway, the upshot is I was, the, the day before I was offered the Minneapolis Foundation job, I was offered the job of county administrator for Los Angeles County with a budget of $21 billion. Billion. Billion dollars with a B. And so that was amazing. Why did I, I uh, and then the next day uh, on, John, on January, I think it was 11th, I was offered the job for the Minneapolis Foundation. I love this community. That's why I stayed here. Um, it, it was funny because the headhunter called me after I took the Minneapolis Foundation job and he said, you're going to be so bored with that job. Mm -hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm not. It's a very wonderful, exciting job. And, and it also has the ingredients of diversity in terms of all the different arenas you are absolutely. working with. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it also, um, uh, encourages a lot of my learning around um, investments, finances, hopefully our economy <laughs> will struggle out of its current mm -hmm. position, but um, we really are, um, I think, as you had said earlier, the oldest foundation, and we really want to build um, with our partners, with our donors, with other foundations, a culture of philanthropy um, here in this region and in this state. And we think that the people of Minnesota have proven to be so generous that um, that we can do that, and we can do that as partners, not just have them as donors, but partner with um, our donors on issues that they think are important and on issues that we think are important in the community. We only have a few minutes left, but I love to always hear from people what they have considered their greatest challenge. And now you've only been at the Minneapolis Foundation one year, about exactly a year, What's been the greatest challenge, Sandy, for you at the foundation? Well, there's a couple of them. One is this, the, the, the biggest challenge at the moment is the economy, because um, we'd love to have our economy uh, and our, our returns just absolutely skyrocketing. Well, we all know that whatever goes up has to come down at some point. So that's a large challenge. And the question is, how do we engage donors so that they see that even in these um, slower times of the economy, we need their partnership, we need their input, we need their feedback. That's one challenge. The other challenge is how do we create transparency in, uh, for the work that we do in the Minneapolis Foundation? How do we create not only transparency but also visibility for philanthropy? Because um, oftentimes when I say I work at the Minneapolis Foundation, they'll say, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. And I'll give them an example. For example, when that tragedy of the 35W bridge went down. Um, we talked to the staff, I talked to the staff very quickly and decided that we needed to get a fund going in order to help the victims um, with that horrible tragedy. Uh, one of the things that we did do in, in addition is we had, we had used um, a, a portal called Minnesota Helps um, for the um, uh, Katrina hurricane victims. And so we brought that portal up, and at the same time, we mm -hmm. called our partner foundations, the McKnight Foundation, St. Paul Community Foundation, the United Way, Northwest Area Foundation, and others. They were so generous, they immediately jumped in. We built a fund. It reached about a million two um, in a few months. Mm -hmm. And then our staff, um, Karen Kelly Ariula, also created a process with many other partners and agencies to help the victims through getting some um, uh, resources that were needed immediately after they experienced the tragedy. Now, just from what I've heard recently, 
people are not using the money that is available to the degree one would have thought at this point. What's your response to that, Well, Sandy? I think that, um, and as we've talked about it uh, among ourselves at, s at the staff level, one of the things that happen is when a tragedy like this um, occurs, um, the victims are often in the state of shock. I mean, I, I think it's a very, I, I think it's such a dramatic, life-changing uh, experience that it takes a long time to get regrounded and then um, figure out what bills am I paying, what bills do I have to pay. And I do have to tell you that at this point, we have um, uh, spent down about half of the fund. Mm, okay. And More so, than I had heard. And, and we have really, with our partner, the United Way, um, called people, made sure that we touched and re reached out to everyone who was on the bridge that had experienced um, that awful uh, tragedy. And so it is, it is going very much better now. That work, I think, then, is, a, is an example of the collaboration that That's you are exactly. promoting and, and involved with. Well, this half hour has gone entirely <laughs> too fast. Um, we could talk for another couple hours, and, and uh, I have questions, 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 but thank you so much. Before you go, we're going to put on the screen, if, if you would like to learn more about what Sandy's work is all about, go to www.minneapolisfoundation.org. And um, that will, will describe some of your work there. Um, just in one last um, question for me and answer from you, for women who are watching, who are saying, wow, um, she did it, do you have any short tip that, that um, is transferable? I do. It's, it's get in touch with yourself. Really, really understand what it is that you want to do and then write it down mm -hmm. and think about it and your energy will move in that direction. It may not be the exact job you have in mind, but it will move you just as it did with me. Well, on that great uh, ending, I will say thank you, Sandy. It's been delightful having you, thank you. join me. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back again next week. Until then, have a good week. <laughs>